Good morning, everybody. This is Robin and Alex with Ironwood Financial. And today's topic, Alex, is going to be layers of fees. Something we call the onion. The onion, yeah, that's right. Okay. Lots of people come in, and when we start talking about fees and expenses, most clients don't realize all the expenses that they may already be paying in their portfolio. We see many people who come in, they're working with an advisor, and we ask them, okay, well, do you know what you're char they're charging you? And he says, 1%. Okay, well, that's technically true. Your advisor is charging you 1%. However, there are other fees as well. As an example, if you're using Vanguard, do you think Vanguard's getting paid? Chances are they are. Okay, There's no such thing as a free lunch. Every investment carries a hidden expense, even the ones in your 401k. Every mutual fund, the bank, you name it, has expenses that they have to pay in order to keep the lights on. So they get those from uh, usually what I would consider hidden fees. Okay, now they do disclose these fees in those beautiful little prospectuses that they mail you. However, when was the last time you actually read a prospectus? Obviously, there are going to be fees and expenses involved, but when you add all those up, it really does create a drag on your performance of your portfolio. So we really want you to know and understand what those are. So we're here to break it down, make it very simple for you, and talk about the different layers of fees that you need to be aware of before you decide what to invest in. Actually, I do want to mention on the advisor fee, make sure your advisor fee is competitive. Uh, we see people who range from fees in just the advisor part of the fee from roughly half a percent on really large portfolios up to a percent and a half on some of the smaller ones. In our opinion, you should really never pay over 1% in an advisor fee because that's pretty much the industry standard. So unless someone's got something really special, try to keep it at 1% or less. So let's start talking about the fund expense. Okay, let's talk about the fund expense and what those typically range from. When you look at your investment, you have to realize that every investment carries a fee, usually an expense ratio or something like that, and often it's pretty hard to find because it's hidden in the prospectus. Okay, so as an example, those range from 0.05% all the way up to about 2.25% for some of the more expensive options out there. Okay, we also have things like annuities that can carry sometimes a 3.5% per charge per year, which is pretty expensive and very difficult to get over that drag that Robin mentioned earlier. So you need to realize that there is an expense, you need to know what it is, and you need to make sure that you're getting value for that expense. Because if you're paying 2.5% for something that you could get for half a percent, why pay the extra 2%? So when you look at them, you need to know. So first off, we've got your advisor fee. We've got your operating expense ratio. And then we have something called turnover expense. Turnover is really when a fund or a fund manager, Alex, has stocks or bonds inside their fund, how much they actually turn and buy and sell within that fund on an annual basis. One of the things that, that costs money is that might cost them trade fees. And obviously, that's passed down to the the client. The other thing it costs though is taxes, right? Every time they do that, they don't call us up and say, well, we're ready to sell this. We can't tell them, well, well, let's just wait until next year so we can save some money on taxes. But every time they make one of those trades, that's a taxable event. So if your tax situation is something you want control of, you need to be careful that you have control over the investments underlying your portfolio. And there is another cost associated with turnover that's not truly an expense. And what that is, is simply market dynamics. So when you look at it, I always use the example of an elephant standing on a raft. So if the elephant goes like this, what happens? The raft goes like that. Well, some of these big investment firms are elephants on rafts. And when they're managing, let's say a billion dollars in a particular fund, they're not gonna go out and buy 50 bucks a stock or sell 50 bucks a stock. They might want Let's say they like this company that makes this pen and they say they want to invest in it. They might put 50 or 100 million dollars in it. Okay. Well, if they submit that order to the exchange, what happens to the price of that stock? It starts to tick upwards. Chances are no one's going to have 100 million dollars worth of that stock they want to sell at that day at that price. So what happens is it's going to fill in little bits, little increments till they might pay an extra dollar per share for that stock. Now, again, that's not an expense, but you can see how that would cost you total return when they do it. The last thing I want to talk about as far as fees and expenses is taxes. Taxes is a big one, but it's something that we can try and control in our portfolios. Every time we sell something in our portfolio, that may create a short-term or long-term capital gain. 
If we have a holding that we've held for less than a year and we sell that, that's going to trigger short-term capital gains. Well, short-term capital gains are, ca are basically taxed at ordinary income taxes. That could be 25% of your, of your gain is going to be taxed. Or even more. Or even more. So if we sell something that we've held for longer than a year, that triggers long-term capital gains, which is definitely more preferable than short-term gains. Uh, but it's something that you want to consider and make sure you're not making quick decisions and selling something without considering your taxes. And again, some investments that you can buy, you get to decide when to trigger those short-term or long-term gains and other investments, they decide for you. So depending on your tax situation, that could be very costly. So again, we want to make sure that you're very aware of what you're paying your advisor, what the expenses are that you're paying for all your different investments, and make sure you don't forget about taxes because all of these things really weigh down on your performance. With that said, if you have any questions in regards to what you're paying uh, as far as your funds or your advisor and you have any questions for us, please let us know. We're here to help. Alex and I can be reached on Facebook. Our, our phone number is 520-318-4600. Uh, this is Robin and Alex. We'll see you next time.